Hello family, I have come on today to make a brown sugar and cream cheese pound cake. Now to make this particular pound cake family, we are going to cream together a full cream cheese block, a full stick of butter, which is equivalent to a half a cup of unsalted butter. We have one cup of uh, brown sugar. We have a cup and a half of white granulated sugar three cups of all-purpose flour, um, one cup of uh, buttermilk. We're going to use one half teaspoon of salt. These are five uh, eggs that have been sitting at room temperature. And we're also going to have two uh, teaspoons of vanilla extract and a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Let's get started. Our butter and cream cheese should have been um, sitting out to be room temperature. Uh, the butter is a little bit, but still kind of hard as well as the cream cheese. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it in the microwave and nook it just for like a good 10 seconds to make it a little bit more softer than it is. See, it's a little bit, but what we want it to... I, I, want it just a little bit more. I think it's the Virgo in me to just kind of be a perfectionist as well as Virgo. What can I say? Oh yeah, this is good. This is good. So we're not going to do anything to this one. We're just going to... This one is fine, but... That butter... Well, maybe that butter might be okay too. But now that I done put it all in the cup and everything and got it all like that, I think I'm going to go in and still nick it at least 5 or 10 seconds just to get it a little bit softer. This was harder because it had been in the refrigerator for some time, so. But this has been sitting out good enough, so that's fine. But let's take this and put this in here just for a second. And then let's get our shield and put our shield on our kitchen aid. Now that's good enough. Now let's get started. I'll put it in this opening here because I'll put the dry ingredients in the chute since I have the arm up. So we're going to just cream together our sugars and cream cheese slowly. So. We're going to start cracking our eggs one at a time. Now, um, it is good practice to cut, uh, break your eggs inside of a cup or something first. 
Um, but I just bought these eggs, so I'm just taking for granted that these eggs are fresh. But for the most part, you want to crack these in something first before you just add them into your dishes. We're going to add two teaspoons of uh, vanilla extract. I'm going to kind of eyeball it. I did say two teaspoons, right? I think I did. <laughs> two teaspoons. That's about good. I like it, so it will be good. Let's get our dry ingredients prepared. Now we're going to add a, a half a teaspoon of baking soda and another half teaspoon of regular salt. Gonna take a little knife, it's fine. Just gonna mix that in just a little bit, like that. Now, girls, this is what you call a sifter. Um, I want to give you a quick tip. Now, the best and the cheapest place to get this from is your local Goodwill. Thank me later, I'm telling you, because this one right here, as you can see, um, I took the um, sticker off. I got it for $1.99, and oh my God, and look at the condition it's in. Can you imagine all of the bread and everything that was probably made with this? Oh my God, the history. I had to get it. So, but at any rate, to sift your flour, this is the easiest way that I have found to do this. Um, if you put down a paper towel, then you add it to your sifter this way. Now, you can use, I could use that same knife or if I had a fork or something like that or another spatula. Whatever you want to use is fine, okay? But this is the easiest way and the less messiest way that I've found to sift my dry ingredients together.
Yeah, your hand will get tired. Know that. And this is three cups of all-purpose flour. So, yeah, your hand will get a little tired. Believe that one. Now you can do it once or twice, depend on your preference. Some recipes will say do it once, one will say do it twice. We're just going to do it once. And it's less mess that way. And you just throw your paper towel away. Easy cleanup. a little bit of buttermilk and then we're going to go back with our flour I had a little bit of brown sugar left on my spatula as well. So to clean all this up and make sure that it is blended up well. Make sure we get these edges really good.
Actually, I just wanted a reason to taste the batter. Mm, mm, mm. Oh wow. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. So good. We're gonna bake this at 325. Oh wow, it looks good. It's ready to go in the oven. Let's get our pan ready. I just had to get that 444. Getting the excess water out of it. This is my mom's old bunt pan. And she had it from when she was a little girl. So it's just generations old. And I would really like to know how to clean it. And make it like back to brand new. So if you guys have any ideas how to clean this and bring it back, please let me know on what I can. I know this nonstick is not going to be nonstick. Like really, I, I spray it anyway. But I would like to put something on it. Now I've tried um, um, bartenders. What was it called? It's called... Barkeeper's friend, and it didn't really do anything. So, I don't know. You guys give me an idea as to what I can use on my stainless cookware, as well as this, as well as the cast iron, as well. Please, thank you. But in the meantime, and in between time, let's get this sprayed and non non stuck or non-stick or whichever way you want to call it. Get it prepared for our pound cake batter. Oh, that batter looks just so good. Oh my god, that batter looks good. Oh, I works with my left hand, don't I? Oh my god. My mom used to say, oh, it looks so backwards. Oh, but we are such creative people. Oh, I am a lefty and I love it. As long as I know what I'm doing, it's all good. I'm going to leave that smidget left in there. And all this right here. And... All of this right here. Let me show you. Let me unhook it. And this right here, all these are my goodies. Oh, they are all mine. Mmm. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, this is so good. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm. Huh. Wow. Okay. Back to the video. Mm. Pardon me. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of shimmy this to just kind of take the excess bubbles out and what they will do is they will rise to the top as you'll see they'll begin to pop right on the top of the batter so you can just shimmy it or lightly you know kind of tap it a little bit and it'll bring those bubbles to the surface or those air pockets if you will 
So we're going to bake this in the oven for up to an hour and 15 minutes. So let's get it heated. We're going to cook it for up to an hour and 15 minutes. I'm going to set the timer for, let's go with, I'm going to set the timer for an hour and, mm, hour and 10 minutes. Wow, I'm just getting home and it's been cooking all this time and my son is home. He didn't cut the oven off, so we're going to see together on whether or not it overcooked. Oh, it turned out beautifully. Oh my God, look how beautiful it is. Look at it. Oh my God. Okay, so what we're going to do... Is I love this, even though it is cracked. You guys tell me what can I do about it. Um, I I don't know what type of solvent to put on it that will still be you know okay because I hate to just throw it away. But this is one of my favorite cake savers, but it has a crack in it. So you guys tell me what I need to do. Okay, so this is how we're gonna do this. Let's slide this back. Okay, so we're going to put this on top. Here, aligning the circle in the center. It's still kind of hot, so this. Oh my God, I was really nervous too because I had left it in the oven and I had to go run some errands and I really thought that it had burned and when I got home and Isaiah was here, him and his friend, and I was like, oh my God, how come you didn't cut off the oven? But it turned out perfectly to God be the glory. Let's make some glaze. Okay, to make our glaze, we're going to take some brown sugar. I'm not really measuring it really, but I do want enough this time to really coat the cake well. So let me make this hole a little bit bigger. I like to keep my sugars. Um, double bags up because it keeps ants and stuff from messing with it. Especially if you keep it in the freezer to its very really good look. Get some air out of it. <laughs> I'm not measuring it at all, but I'm just going to pour a little bit at a time. And then to make the consistency to your like or more powdered sugar as you need it. I like this mixing bowl. This was a good look. I just got it at the Dollar Tree for a dollar, and this is really good. I like it. Okay. Look like it's a decent consistency. Yeah, that's good enough.
Wow, that looks so good. Oh, wow. Look how it's pouring out. <laughs> wow, it looks good. Mm, mm, mm. And it tastes good, too. Wow. From my home to yours. Bon appetit, family. Bye-bye for now.